This video is designed to give you a high-level overview of what is involved in installing the Donaldson Panelized RF Collector. The Panelized RF Baghouse Field Assembly Manual provides detailed information on how to install this product. The Donaldson Field Assembly Manual contains instructions and cautions which must be reviewed prior to assembly in order to achieve expected assembly results. In addition, please be sure to refer to the RF Installation and Operation Manual for any RF operation, service, or troubleshooting information. The panelized RF will ship to the job site on several flatbed trailers. Parts for the collector will be crated in a fashion similar to what is shown. To properly unload this collector, we recommend you use a forklift if it is large enough or a forklift and a crane, adopting all safety precautions needed for moving and handling equipment. The first part to be assembled is the leg structure. We recommend that the leg structure be assembled on the pre-poured foundation by first installing the legs, then adding the cross bracing, followed by the I-beam frame. In this particular installation, the pre-poured foundation was not ready, so the installer assembled the leg structure in a different location. Since they could not secure the legs to the foundation, they decided to assemble the leg structure upside down. The leg structure was then flipped over when the platform was complete. In this situation, first to be assembled was the I-beam frame. Here, the I-beam perimeter is laid out and hand bolted together. The I-beam frame is completed by adding the cross bracing members to each corner. Next, two vertical legs were laid down on their sides. Then, the back to back angle iron cross bracing is bolted together. There are four sets of these one for each side. The vertical legs are then secured to the I-beam frame along with the cross bracing. Once all parts are in place, all bolts are tightened. Once complete, the upside down leg structure in this installation was set to the side. The tube sheet is the next part of the collector that we recommend to be assembled. The tube sheet will serve as a template for the assembly of other components later on. The tube sheet comes in several pieces. To assemble it, it should first be laid upside down on standoffs to keep the tube sheet free of blemishes. Sealant is applied to all joints then the tube sheet is bolted together. The bottom connecting plate is bolted on. Once the tube sheet is bolted together, it is then flipped over right side up. Sealant is then applied and the top connecting plate is bolted on to complete the tube sheet. Next to be assembled is the hopper. The hopper should be assembled on a flat, clean surface. If this is not available, it should be assembled on the tube sheet. The first hopper section is put into position. Sealant is applied to the hopper flange per instructions. The next section of the hopper, in this case the other half, is lifted into place. 
drift pins are used to align the holes. The top half of the hopper is bolted together. Next, sealant is applied to the bottom flange of the upper hopper section. The lower section of the hopper is then lowered into place. Drift pins are then used to align the holes. The lower hopper section is then bolted to the upper section. The hopper can now be tipped over and installed on the leg structure. Next to be assembled is the involute inlet assembly. This should be assembled on a flat clean surface. If this is not available it should be assembled on the tube sheet. Apply sealant to the first flange. And then set the second section into place. Use drift pins to align the holes and then bolt the sections together. Continue the same procedure until the inlet section is complete. After the perimeter is complete, the interior baffles should be installed. Once the baffles are installed, the inner flow straightener can be bolted into place. Once this step is complete, sealant should be applied to the top hopper flange and the involute scroll inlet can be set on the hopper and bolted into place. Remember that placement of the inlet is critical to ensure proper orientation. Consult the original order or Donaldson supplied customer drawing to determine how to position the inlet. The next portion of the collector to be assembled is the dirty air plenum. The first step here is to set the 66 inch tall first ring body panels onto a clean flat surface. If there is no suitable flat surface, use the tube sheet as a template. Apply sealant to one face of the lapping plate and install the lapping plate on the first panel. Put the second panel into position and bolt the panel to the lapping plate. Bolting from inside out. Continue the same way until the first ring is done. Assemble the second ring on top of the first. This ring of the dirty air plenum and additional rings will be assembled using the prior ring as a template. Apply sealant to the top flange of the first ring. Lift a panel into place, taking note that vertical seams must be spaced by a minimum of four bolt spaces. Proceed this way until all rings are complete. After completing the second body panel ring, tighten the connections between the first and second body panel rings, followed by all the vertical lapping plates. For the 12-foot bag length collector, the third and final dirty air plenum ring will be made up of 66 inch tall panels. Please note that when assembling the uppermost ring of the dirty air plenum, be aware that this ring uses special lapping plates which will be used to secure the tube sheet in later steps. Attach the lifting lugs and lift the dirty air plenum. After the dirty air plenum is assembled, the clean air plenum is assembled in a similar fashion. Set the 66 inch tall clean air first ring body panel on a clean level surface or use the tube sheet as a template. Bolt panels together using the lapping plates as done on the dirty air plenum. The second ring of the clean air plenum has unique panels which includes the outlet panel and door frame panel. Sealant must be applied to the inside of the door frame panel before it is set into place. Remember that placement of the outlet is critical to ensure proper orientation. Consult the original order or Donaldson supplied customer drawing to determine where to position the outlet 
while noting the door access is always at the 90 degree position. The rest of the clean air plenum is assembled. At this point of the clean air plenum assembly, the H-frame for the cleaning system can be installed into the clean air plenum. Make sure the H-frame is level as it's lowered into position. Next, bolt the air chamber T to the air tank. Lower the air tank assembly into the clean air plenum and into the H-frame and secure it into place. Once the air tank is lowered into place, the cleaning arms can be installed. Next, install the roof. Before the roof is joined to the top ring, apply sealant to the top bolt flange. Apply sealant to connecting flanges. The second half of the roof is lifted into place. Working from the inside, insert all hardware joining the two half roof panels. Prepare to set the top cap into the opening at the peak of the roof. Apply a liberal ring of sealant to the inside of the bolt hole pattern and around each individual bolt hole. Set the top cap into place and bolt tight. Sealant is then applied on the exterior of the roof joint. Once the dirty air and clean air plenums are complete, the tube sheet can be secured to the dirty air plenum. Apply sealant to the top flange of the dirty air plenum. Lift the tube sheet into the dirty air plenum and slowly lower the tube sheet into position. Tube sheet stiffeners will be facing down. Lower the tube sheet into position. Then insert the hardware required to connect the tube sheet radial stiffeners to the internal gussets. The dirty and clean air plenums can be joined together on the leg structure or before these major parts are placed on the leg structure. How this is done will be dictated by the equipment the installer has. In this situation, these two major sections are joined together before the entire assembly is lifted onto the involute scroll inlet section. Care is taken to make sure the vertical joints do not overlap and make sure the clean air outlet is in proper orientation. In this installation, the next step is to lift and secure the dirty and clean air plenum on top of the involute scroll inlet. Once this is done, the platform and ladder can be installed. Assemble the platform assembly including the cross bracing and railings. Then lift the platform assembly into position. Install cross bracing for the platform. Assemble the ladder packs at grade level. Temporarily bolt the adjustable bottom section of the ladder at the highest position. Once again, this gives you a high level view of what is involved in the installation of the Donaldson panelized RF. Please be sure to use the panelized RF Baghouse Field Assembly Manual for complete instructions. Donaldson thanks Air Systems of Lenore Incorporated 
for allowing us to film this video as they installed this collector.